Happy Friday, everybody. This is Gay and Bruno, and welcome to Between the Sheets. We're usually on the first and third Friday of every month at 7 p.m. Pacific. Um, it is whatever today's date is, the 28th. Yeah. Um, we're having strikes all around town. Um, I'm still busy because I have a secret show. Well, it's not a secret show. I have Big Brother. Um, and it's going to be going on for a very long time. And I just did the photo shoot. So stay tuned for Monday if you're a Big Brother fan. We'll be making the announcement of who the castmates are. Um, and if you're on Twitter or Instagram, you'll get a sneak peek of the house. Um, yes, that was a promo for CBS. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. Um, follow us, follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat, and uh, if that one you don't like, and BW The Sheets. Um, we have a YouTube page, uh, slowly putting probably a year and a half worth of shows up there. Um, so the newest ones are going up immediately, but uh, for the past, it's taken me a little while. Um, you can call us. Today's going to be a good show. It's always a good show, but today's mm -hmm. a good show. I haven't, we haven't done a show like this with someone like this in probably a very long time. Uh, we've been going strong since 2009. So if you want to call us, it's 323-524-2599. And Tony will be putting up the number. I, I really, I really, you know, I know people are watching. It's just interesting that you guys don't call. I mean, I know we're fascinating women, but, you know, we'd really like to hear. It just, it really does, it really does, like, bamboozle me. Bamboozle? I don't even know if that's, like, confuse me. Befuddle? Befuddle me. No, 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 there I am. Thank okay. I, I, I don't understand. But anyway, so you know what? Um, nonetheless, um, let me introduce everybody. We have to my left, Mara Shane. I'm on your right. You're... No, no, I am on you're your my left. left. <laughs> the other left. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, we have Sheena Metal on Zoomy Zoom Zoom. Hi, Sheena. Hi, I'm, I'm Zoomy Zoom Zooming. You're Zoomy Zoom Zooming. Hi, Hi. Hi. We have Durga Hi. McBroom. Hello. Uh, when do you leave to go out of town again? I Thursday. Mean, Thursday. She goes to Italy. Italy. Oh. Back to Italia. Okay. And Ancora in Italia, sì. Mm. And then our guest this evening is her name is Emma. Emma. Ammo, like Ammo, O'Day. She's a personal trainer, a yogi, and my favorite part, a sorceress. Mm -hmm. um, she combines 30 years of fitness, yoga, and the magical arts to help her clients reach their full potential. Nice. By applying various, I'm putting, I'm just reading exactly what I fucking posted on Facebook it. today. <laughs> By applying various <laughs> training modalities, she facilitates deep healing in a safe and transformative space. So, um, I met, well, I'll start really quickly because it's really kind of, you know, it's like when, when there's no mistake for meeting someone, um, and it's, it's because it's peculiar, but yet familiar. Um, a friend of mine, Rachel, she was on the show, I don't know how many weeks ago. Um, she went to this place, I think to do Pilates yoga, something or other. We'll talk about it later, but whatever it is. And she called me and she said, Oh my God, you have to have this woman, this trainer on your show. And then she explained. And then I'm like, all right, all right, like hook us up. And so she, um, Ammo called me. And I think within about like a few minutes, maybe 10, I found out that where I'm from in New Jersey, I wasn't born there, but where I was raised was North Bergen, New Jersey. Nobody fucking heard of it, okay? Out here, no one knows where it is. She's like there. I mean, like it's like, go yep, ahead. Yep, I've yep. spent, I think, 11 years in North Bergen. Wow. Right, and then we just started like reminiscing about that stuff. And so most of the conversation was kind of like talking about like, that. Yeah, <laughs> like how... Do you know what that no. is or where that is? Right. And so um, so that, oh, I thought, oh, my God, I thought Sheena was showing us her cleavage. And, then, <laughs> and, then, and, and now she's gone. So oh, she's out. The cat was in the way. Oh, I thought her cleavage was in the way. Um, <laughs> you wish. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so we started, and then she, and then she explained very clearly um, what she re what she does, and I actually did have a um, session with her, and then you know I, I got busy, but um, but so I will pass it to you, mm -hmm. Ammo, and explain who you are, mm -hmm. you know um, how you got into this, okay. 
and uh, then we'll talk about what you're doing now. Sure. So I was uh, born and bred in New Jersey, uh, born in Jersey City, and I started exercising and just getting into fitness in my teen years because my grandmother was the accountant at the YMCA. Oh. That's kind of how it started. I had to learn how to show people how to use the Nautilus equipment. And so I started using it myself because I figured why not. And I realized because I, I was not a sports child. I was very shy. I did not want to be in gym class or a team sport. Like, please leave me alone. I'm a goth, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want anything to do with it. But I realized this, I could just put my headphones on and just be in my own little world. Mm -hmm. And work out mm. and it got I got really into it I was like high anxiety kid you mm. know a lot too much energy and that was my place to put it and I realized it didn't just make me look better it made me feel better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so so I was working out regularly and then I got into witchcraft in my late teens from meeting a friend who uh, who was basically raised Wiccan and that just made so much more sense to me than the Catholicism and the Catholic school that mm -hmm. I was raised in. And by the way, this is why I look like this, because of Catholic school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm convinced that if I went to the public school, I would probably not be tatted up and crazy and mm. doing all. But I'm much happier this way. Mm -hmm. Anyway. You've got so, some cool tats up in there. Thank you. There's quite I can't a, believe you've got heat miser. That I is do, so cool. and that shows how old you are. And Mr. Because most Heat people don't Master know who Heat Miser is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I started getting into witchcraft, uh, you know, in my late teens, and then yoga just eventually showed up, mainly because of the magical traditions I worked with, like mm. Aleister Crowley's uh, magical system incorporates yoga. Mm. Mm. So what happened was, when I would when I would just do fitness and nutrition. I felt great physically, but I felt very disconnected from my who I really was internally, like the earth around me, like just the universe in general, I guess. Um, and then if I focused just on the magical things, my body felt terrible. Mm. So I started to just incorporate it in my own way. Like I would make sure that I exercised and did some meditating and maybe a little candle or did some work with crystals. And then over the years, when when I was just a trainer with people, I realized like what I wanted to do with them was like not make them do squats. I was like, <laughs> I just wanted to pull the pendulum over somebody's head and figure out like what else was the issue. Mm -hmm. And I worked at a big chain gym and I couldn't do what I do there. So eventually I left and then I was doing my private business in New York um, and working at a witchcraft store called Enchantments, which is still open by the way, in the East Village. Um, and that's kind of how I started like building my business from there. I would just meet people there and you know, I still have clients from there that I work with on Zoom uh, all the time from New York. Um, cool. And so why'd yeah, you make the move to LA? I made the move t to LA because I felt like at the end of the day, New Yorkers only take care of their body enough to not have a heart attack. Mm. <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm convinced like they just they just do enough to function, you know, and I felt like besides the fact that I have so many friends here mm -hmm. and I loved visiting, I felt like I needed to leave home and detach from just my upbringing and everything and just start fresh. And I, I only moved here at 46, so mm -hmm. it'll be five mm. years this in September. Um, but yeah. So between the quarantine and settling in, I'm just now starting to like really just like build it up and, and yeah. solidify my plan. I'm planning a book and cool. I'm teaching a class at the Crooked Path that's close oh, yeah. by in Burbank uh, every Sunday. And so the, oh. the, the classes are mainly based off of what the book will be. So I was using the class to create the, the chapters. And ah, very that. cool. So it's what based time? Uh, 12.30 on Sundays. Ooh. 12.32. Where is it in Burbank? Um, it's right on Magnolia, 2020 Magnolia. It's like eight minutes from here. Oh, okay. Yeah, super close. What is the Crooked Path? It's a witchcraft store and Ooh. a cult store. Okay. And awesome. South Point. Yeah, they sell books. Oh, you know it, Gina? I know Sal very well. Oh, we yes. We were in a Victorian mm. seance group together. Of course, oh, wow. of course, of course you were. <laughs> of course I was. Sal, some other wonderful people. Sal, if, if you know Sal well, Sal is the male version of me. Oh, oh nice. Okay. When we first like when we first met through a friend uh, from from Instagram, a friend of a friend was like, "You need to meet her, and she needs to hook you up with like reading at this shop." 
So I go to meet him initially, like he didn't pay me any mind. But once we started talking, we have so many similarities. Like he was in the fetish scene here. I was in the fetish scene in New York. You know, right. he's a musician. I'm a musician. He's into the occult. I'm into the occult. Like there were points where he showed me a picture of himself. And at the same time, we both had a red short mohawk haircut. <laughs> like really, like really bizarre stuff, and he's also and he's also a Virgo, so we just like instant like it's just so funny. I actually stopped. He doesn't hi. like when the Ouija board gets really terrifying. No, he's not into that. No, he's, he's not into the confrontational spirits that come through and try to get in your grill at yeah. all. <laughs> I, I, I'm not into that either. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. that doesn't nah. surprise me in the least. Yeah. I grew up in a house with that, so I'm used to it. So yeah. I'm like, ah. Eh. Yeah, I'm not really. F I'm just like, yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> I'm like, it's funny when the, my first apartment here, uh, the uh, the guy told me he's like, just so you know, he's like, somebody died here, and I was like, great, another spirit to add to my collection. Right? <laughs> right. I'm like, hi, Michael, exactly, how are you? Right? You know, and yeah, it's like, and the apartment had been open forever. And like it was, my friends were like, how did you get such a cheap apartment in Studio City? I'm like, somebody uh, died there. Uh -huh. Oh, the one you're in now? The one I was in right before this. Oh, one. okay. Wow. And on the same block, actually. Did you pick up any vibrations, any ghostly? Um, I just, I mean, he'd been there like for 40 years. Oh, like, wow. He'd yeah. Been there forever, was, and it was a super was tiny, there. like one room studio uh -huh. apartment. So it was just like, I will. I didn't necessarily notice anything specific, but my cats mm. would would occasionally just be like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. just like. Like, <laughs> like, like, look at me! Like, why is this are, guy are you, standing are you over there? Do anything about this guy? And I'm like, I'm like, uh, he's welcome to stay. He was here before for us, so you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, spirits like that aren't aren't any big deal. I don't mind yeah. spirits like that. It's like to me, using a Ouija board is like going to a really crappy Dark. club full of like the kind of guys you don't want hitting on exactly. you because they're the ones that like are earthbound usually and yeah. come through a Ouija board and that's why a lot of them miss can't don't yeah. spell well and a lot of them are very base spirits yeah and some of them so are not so nice no. and so I don't mess it's, with that it's so interesting you said that Durga because I always say when I teach that Messing with a Ouija board when you don't know what you're doing is like walking into a bar naked at 2 a.m. Yeah. and saying, who wants yeah. to have sex with yeah. me? That's basically. basically yeah. 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 But it's not going to be who you want. No. Right? No. Yeah. no. That's no. a perfect uh, exactly. analogy for that. How much, horoscope, how much does horoscope come into your... I look at your chart. So, like, mm. let's say you wanted to start with me. The first thing we would do is we would do a Reiki session and a tarot reading. Because Oop. because the Reiki session is going to tell me what's going on in your body, oh. even if you have no idea what mm. the hell's happening. Okay. And okay. the tarot reading is going to tell me where you're currently at with your life situation and why that's happening. And okay. then I look at your chart mm. while we're doing the reading, and I'm like, well, oh, okay, you're doing this because of this. Really? One stop shopping. So mm -hmm. let, yeah, so that, exactly. It sounds awesome. Uh, so um. You know, that's why I bring that in. Like, I'm not the master astrologer by any means, mm -hmm. but I know enough of it to be able to look at your chart, look at where, you know, what's in what's what planets and what sign, why you do what you do in terms of your love life, in terms of how you your emotions, in terms of what you do for a living, you know, and I can. You know, and then we go from there. Everybody's customized. Like mm -hmm. some people just do personal training with me. Mm -hmm. I have a client from Enchantments in New York. She lives across the street from me. She just does kettlebell work. She's a martial artist, and she's got some injuries. And so I know how to do things with her that'll, you know, she's occasionally she'll get a reading, but that's pretty much her mm -hmm. thing. Other people will just do the witchy stuff. Um, ideally, I want people who want to do some form of everything. But this is the thing: it's like it, it changes for people all the time. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes, <laughs> like somebody has got a training session and they show up and they're like, "Girl, I'm a hot mess today. Can right. I just lay here and let you like Reiki me?" And I'm like, mm. "Sure," you know, because nice. it's not. I'm not like if if you want a boot camp instructor, I can do it, mm -hmm. but it's not. Yeah, that was on my list. Is uh, that's not me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's like, we can. She's so funny because she's like, after we did it, and and you know, she did that, and then she's like, well, we could do a follow up, and she started like saying what possibilities of follow-up are and yeah. i'm just sitting here going yeah that one <laughs> <laughs> we can move your body yeah not no not yeah. that one nope yeah. how about 
I, I'll take the laying down one. <laughs> I'll take the laying down. I'll take the tarot cards and the pizza delivery. And the laying down. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can move your body. What, 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 what is it? What did you say for me? What is it? It was the like the low, the lowest like sort of that your that you that body moves. What is it? Besides breathing. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell was it? Sleep? It was sleep? no, no, it was not sleep. It was no, because you said we could start with not Pilates. What was it? Yo was it yoga? Yo was it yoga? Oh, some yoga pose. Was it yoga yeah. poses? Yeah. Some yoga poses, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> she goes, just something very slow. Mm. Okay. Do you know? Do you know who Kathleen Madigan is? Yeah. She's hilarious. She's really funny. She has this bit where she's like, okay, I understand why poor people are fat because Taco Bell takes the same three ingredients and makes the most amazing things out of them every week. But, like, you know, billionaires, why are they fat? They literally can pay somebody to stand by the table and slap food out of their hand yeah. when it comes to their mouth. Right. And move their body like, I you have know, been a paid child. to stand next to a treadmill. And do what? Just, just get like just talk to motivation. Them. Just talk to them, because they wouldn't oh, do like it that. if I wasn't there. Yeah, like so it's yeah. just accountability yeah. is a lot of it. Are you ever in a session with somebody mm. and you're thinking it's going one way, but then all of a sudden you get their personality or something you pick up on intuitively, maybe mm -hmm. starts coming in to, and then do you I have can, to stop? And I can pick up a lot of things in a Reiki session. Like I've been able mm. to tell people that they had a miscarriage. You know, which and there's no and there's no way for me to logically know these. It's like mm -hmm. I just like I. It's like a. But auto, what if you're not like in Reiki? Bowl. What if you're just doing uh, kettlebells? Like, can do you ever just, kettlebells? But sorry, <laughs> kettlebells. <laughs> that's a different I, service. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, yes, that's a whole different <laughs> service. That's a whole that's, other thing. Sorry. Tony specializes <laughs> in kettlebells. <laughs> sorry. I'm a I'm a Virgo, so I tend to just correct people. I, I yeah, I so, don't mean anything so, by that. So so like, go ahead. Uh, does that? Do oh no, you don't understand, Burm, <laughs> Mara. What the hell? I'm sorry to interrupt. But what is the thing that you said? Oh, what this the areas in the yeah, body? Yeah, go, oh, what, yeah. Why don't you explain the one? We were talking about the chakras, <laughs> right? Oh god. And we were talking about the cranium or whatever, and it gets the crown, down, the yeah. whatever, crown. the and the then sahasra. It gets down to the, to the sphincter or the sphinx? <laughs> oh, the sphincter. The chakra. sacral? <laughs> the anus? Sacral, yeah. So, that's the sacral. But what was my root. favorite one? I thought it was the anus. I thought it meant. That's the root the chakra. Sacrum. Yeah. Was it the sacrum is the anus? It's the root chakra. Yes, the root chakra. <laughs> the root and chakra. she says, well, that's the anus. And we all just said, they went. <laughs> What's wrong with you? you know it's, it's close. It's she close. So I mean, funny. she's not technically wrong. No, yeah. she is a dick But it I was think, just, you know, we have. I think we just technically do have an anal right. chakra. Yes. Right. Anal, anal chakra. She, that's what, anal chakra. She was like asking about the anal chakra. And she goes, isn't there another one? I can't remember yeah. what it was. But she added an extra. And <laughs> that's the, the hidden. So that's extra credit. It's like on the secret menu of chakras. <laughs> Only the, only the great people know about I the anal, people, I the anal chakra. Could probably benefit. You'll, you'll from only that find one, that yeah. one if you've been in a cave Loosened for up. like twenty days <laughs> meditating. Okay. And yeah. you need special sauce yes, to. Yes. Oh my god. And probably special drugs. Oh yeah. god. Oh my god. It's a strong it's strain of weed. Down 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 so like so down. don't apologize for correcting Mara. <laughs> this whole thing is. Please don't if, apologize for correcting Mara. If you correct me, you have to worry because. You know, and she, it's always and don't stop her because it's always good for a laugh. On this show. <laughs> <laughs> it it actually it does happen like where somebody might be in the middle of exercising and I just like Have what usually flash. happens is I'll get a flash of mm -hmm. something or like a, e either a visual or like I'll get yelled at from like an ancestor of theirs. Yeah, and I'd be like, you I'm can so, hear like, I'll like I won't hear like the tone of somebody's voice, but I'll hear like a sentence. Oh my, yeah. And I'll be like, um, <laughs> you, especially if it's somebody who doesn't really do the other work with me. And if it's somebody who's just, you know, working out, I'll be like, so I need to stop you for a second. <laughs> because there's a woman talking to me who looks like this and has blue eyes and is saying, you're full of shit right now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, d I don't know what she's talking about. And, mm -hmm. and he'll, she'll just be like, why is Aunt Margie like that? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't shoot the messenger. Right. I'm just trying to, you know. And wow. then it, like, escalates into, like, 
maybe I need a reading and I don't need to do squats today. And I'm like, okay, sit down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then that's how that goes. So Reiki, what's, I mean, like, what is the importance of Reiki? Why do you advocate? The reason why I advocate Reiki, is, the way I look at it is imagine acupuncture without the needles. It's essentially moving energy that is blocked in the body and it gets blocked there from trauma mm-hmm. and guilt and shame. And most people, I'm including myself, I'm sure, because I'm not perfect in any way, we all have blocks in the body that are created from some kind of issue from childhood. Mm-hmm. You know, and what happens is as a human race, we are not taught or trained to look into that Mm-mm. and to say, I'm fucked up. <laughs> I got to figure out what the fuck am I doing? Like, I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. That's called insanity, by the way. Yes. And, you know, no one's taught to, like, look, delve deep into what the problem is. You know, so when I do Reiki, it's about scanning the body and just, like, I will automatically gravitate to certain parts of the body, which are certain chakras, and I'll remain in a certain place, and I'll, like, pick up maybe a health issue or, like, something that mm. happened, you know, and it's about figuring out, like, okay, this is, all right, so, and then we go back, like, this is why you're not getting work, because this is stuck, you know, mm-hmm. like, this, like, root chakra, you don't, you, you know, and then it goes into, like, their parents, their mm-hmm. parents weren't okay with money. The money doesn't grow on trees, you know, all that stuff. And they didn't have a safe foundation. Mm-hmm. If your foundation is not good, then the building falls down, right? right? So it's like not like there's it's building blocks. So that's why I do energy work. To, like, where is the issue? Yeah, you know. So it's when this, people do Reiki mm-hmm. and you're doing, you know, with I mean, I, I did it. So yeah. you're moving the hand over. Yeah, it's very light touch. Yes, and some people I barely touch them at all. It depends if, like, if I don't know you well, I might not touch you at all if you're uncomfortable. Um, exactly, yeah. you have yeah. to kind of be. Yeah. It's not massage by any. No, 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 no. no, no. I'm bar- I'm literally right. like. But some sorry, people, but cold. some I'm like barely touch. But does everybody like I've had Reiki sessions where you know even they don't even touch me. They're just mm-hmm. like yeah. you yeah. could feel heat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's some Reiki sessions that I can't feel heat. So yeah. what's the deal? Like, are, like is a good Reiki session where you can feel it? And if is or can't you feel it? Or is feeling it or not feeling it has nothing to do with the Reiki healer? Does it have to do with the person's openness? to receive that. It's not I don't nec- that. I don't necessarily yeah. think it has anything to do with openness because it'll get in there if it's supposed to get in there. Like the per- like certain people are just sponges. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, okay, like here we go. <laughs> and the other people it's like I'm just like Ugh, trying to you know, <laughs> Come on, let's go. We got in the reluctant, you know. Can I thing. add oh, something cuz yeah. I've done body work since mm-hmm. I was 17. You know, you mean you've had it done or you no, do it? No, I do it. Oh, okay. I worked in my mother's office doing oh. physical therapy, and then I became a certified massage practitioner, mm-hmm. and I developed a kind of energy work mm-hmm. just from the other spiritual teaching that I had. Mm. And sometimes uh, a lot of, like, sometimes pain and things like that is a defense mechanism mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because we'll experience a trauma at a certain age. Something really terrible will happen, and our defense mechanism is to, like, bundle it up and store it. Yep. And it's stored like as pain somewhere. Yeah. I mean, I had a woman that I used to sing with, uh, Linda Perhax, wonderful woman. She was in her 70s, had been a, a contemporary of Joni Mitchell's, put out an album, then worked for years as a dental hygienist. And then Daft Punk discovered her album. <laughs> and suddenly there was this I demand for her. Punk. Yeah. Uh, and she she holds the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest time between album releases. Mm. So in her 70s, she's out touring again. <laughs> and because she was hunched over as a dental hygienist for years, her neck was really oh, yeah, bet, bad. Yeah. So mm-hmm. sometimes before a show, she'd be like frozen and ask me to work on her. And I remember once we were in San Francisco and I started working on her neck and I, I just developed this thing where you just talk to the muscles. You just ask them, I asked them, why are you so tight? Why are you holding yourself like this? And this answer came back in my head because he hurt us. Mm. And I was like, okay, well, he's not here, so you can let go. And her neck went, Oh, wow. And she said, what did you do? (laughs) Because it stayed that way for a while. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, um, to to answer, Mm -hmm. you know, what you were saying, sometimes, yes, sometimes people are sponge. Some things are so entrenched, you got to kind of tease them out. And some things, it's like different frequencies feel different ways, just Mm -hmm. like different light shades look different ways. 
So you won't feel some things the mm-hmm. way you would feel other things that mm-hmm. are just like, like mm. damn. Yeah, mo- yeah, most people that come to me for Reiki, it's a physical issue. And, and, it, and so, like, let's say a headache mm-hmm. is going to come from things on your mind that you're literally just not talking about mm-hmm. and not getting off your chest. And you're just letting it build and build and build until all of a sudden you have a migraine yeah. that won't fucking go away. Mm-hmm. You know, Or, like, lower half of your body, like ankle, knee, feet. Those are being afraid to move forward, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. literally being afraid to move forward in your life. Mm-hmm. You know? Interesting. So, yeah. What about? Okay, could you segue into your sorcery? I would love to know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, not that this is a sorcery segue. Sorcery no. segue. <laughs> are we going to take a magic carpet into the? <laughs> <laughs> and, and what the hell sorcery. has been going on lately? For God's sake, there's been some crazy Can energies. I, in hello. What the hell? I have seen people are, more... are not pleasant right now. No. <laughs> I have seen more car accidents and like just people chaos bugging Deaths. out. Mm-hmm. Just literally everybody is insane right yeah, now. And it's not to do with Mercury in retrograde, right? Because well, that doesn't happen till August or something. Uh, it happens right. in August. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, Venus Again. is in Leo in retrograde right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, what oh does that Lord. Mean? Well that explains it. It's oh, the yeah. Leo's mm-hmm. world and we all just live in it. Well <laughs> I have the I have Venus in Leo. And so it's retrograde hmm. in my Venus sign. My Mars is in Leo. Uh, ooh. <laughs> I, I don't know you any of this. I have you no have idea. Temper. She's done my chart. I have no clue. <laughs> you have a feisty temper. Um, I have no Leo. I have my. I have, well, I have Leo friend. rising. That I don't sense. know. That's why you're behind of that microphone. You do. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's not the Capricorn. That's no, it's absolutely not the Capricorn. Not going to Gay Ann's birthday party is a capital offense. <laughs> because she has oh, a Leo rising. <laughs> People have been beheaded in a public spectacle. For <laughs> they have not been invited back the next year. Yeah. <laughs> and that's hard to do because I invite everybody. <laughs> so it's not like you'll know. I mean, like everybody's included. It's the ones that are excluded. That's mm. the small few. Oh. So going back to the uh, the energy and the cosmos or mm-hmm. whatever sorcery. So so what was your question? Just I just like, wanted to know. know okay, you said that you were raised around Wiccan, like your friend was Wiccan, right? Yeah. So I was so, so is, I was raised Catholic. Okay. Um, and I guilt and I guilt, yeah, right? Guilt. Which is witchcraft in a whole other form. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it is. much, exactly. so much. Right. I mean, seriously, witchcraft. so much guilt. Yeah, and like low key witchcraft, like, like, transmogrification like, and waving incense. No, that's not witchcraft. None. <laughs> So, you know, so it was like Catholic school, you know, and just the guilt and everything. Um, and I knew at a pretty young age that, like, if I had, like, I was forced to go to church because of school. So you did? I had no choice. It was Catholic school. Oh, uh, my people. Mass. I mean, my Catholic school. Were you Irish Catholic? Yeah. Yeah, the Italian Catholics. We did. They didn't force us to go. I don't really? know if the no. school was Italian, but, like, it was mm-hmm. a, you know. I went to Holy Rosary. Which one did you go to? I went to Our Lady of Grace. Oh, that was horrible. Oh God! No, no. <laughs> I will tell. I know were, they were the Sisters of Charity, and my mother, because it'd been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. My mother, when she was young, they put her in that school, mm-hmm. and my mother, you know, my mother passed away a few years ago. She was eighty nine, so it's a long time ago. Yeah. And those nuns, if like they misstepped, that was like you know. Was a capital corporal punishment? Oh, yeah, yeah. like they freaking beat, you. beat, I beat. Can't beat. Even so my it. my grandmother got so upset with that that mm-hmm. she took her out of that school and put her in public school. Yeah, they yeah. didn't do that by the time I. No, was no, in no. There, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah. it had it so, had a bad rep. Mm. So you yeah. had this Wiccan friend at the time. So yeah. Right? So in my late teens, I had this Wiccan friend, and I, I met her family, and her her mother was Egyptian, Scottish, Irish, and. Native American and black. So wow. she, was like, wow. she was like an amazing, gorgeous combination of many things. She mm-hmm. passed away a few years ago. She was wow. amazing. But she was like the beginning of my learning because I knew from a young age, I was like, I'm not going to hell just because I'm a woman, first of all. So I don't know what this bullshit is. I'm like, this building is really pretty. <laughs> and like to this day, I still like I'm obsessed with church architecture because mm. of like the art. But I'm like, this is not. Mm-hmm. I no. knew It I didn't knew, resonate. It didn't resonate. Yeah. So I started like just, you know, kind of doing what she had her kids doing, like reading the same books and like, you know, buying incense and everything. And it just almost immediately resonated Mm. with me. I was just like, wait, what now? There's like a nature religion that's like based on like 
<laughs> women and goddess and like I don't know anything about Wiccan, so you have to let us know a little well, bit here. I'm I'm not Wiccan, mm-hmm. and Wicca is a newer religion. It's by Gerald Gardner. I, it's it's something that I like pass through. Okay, you know, it's, it's it's something that's more. I think most people are going to pass through it at some point because oh, it's like just a phase. because it was not necessarily a phase, but mm-hmm. I think it's a very good way to learn about witchcraft. In it's a, got good tools. Yeah. It seems like it's yeah. But what I what I immediately started moving into was uh, Irish mythology and like Celtic Beautiful. mythology and like the Celtic goddesses. I have oh. I have Bridget tattooed on my arm, which was an amulet I yes. used to wear around oh, my I neck love all the time. Yeah, she has been with me from day one. I think that's part of the reason why I do healing work actually. Mm. Um, and so I just started doing like uh, reading up on like Celtic. Shem- shamanic practices mm-hmm. and druids and, wow. and all those things but but because i had such access to this cool bookstore i went into everything like egyptian where was Norse. the bookstore located it's it's in the east village it's still there it's still it's there ca- it's called enchantments okay and how yeah. old were you i was probably 18 19 okay yeah mm-hmm. so this just became your whole or your did your whole world just open up yeah i was yeah. just like what, what like, because I because I'm the oldest grandchild in my family so mm-hmm. and I was like weird from the get go <laughs> and I was just like this is not my I don't know what you guys are doing but this is mm. not this is not my thing yeah <laughs> you know I just didn't know what my thing was mm-hmm. until I started learning all of this I'm gonna pause I think yeah. we have a caller hello welcome to Between the Sheets who's calling Rachel hello Rachel hi Rachel hi, hello. hi. what you got I just wanted to say. Well, I just want to say that I think Christine is awesome, and I'm a client of hers, and she's my favorite Reiki person, and we've been doing some really great work. You're, and you're doing kind awesome, of covering Rachel. a lot of deep-rooted stuff. So, yeah, yeah you have to be open uh, to to get into the root of it. That's the thing is like, mm-hmm. you know, if you're, you have to be willing to just like. I keep telling you, you gotta peel the onion, yep. Rachel. Mm-hmm. Just when you think yeah. you're you're through the the hell, there's another hell waiting there's for you. More, <laughs> more, there's more, more hell. hell. It isn't just an onion; it's a blooming onion. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You know, it's like there's always so far you can take traditional therapy, you know, yeah. like talk mm-hmm. therapy, and then at yeah. some point you have to kind of explore other ways to deal with your shit. Yeah. Well, your body, and, your body remembers um, things. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And, and you have to, you know, that's, and I, and I, I really do believe that that's why people are freaking out right now is because we had a quarantine mm-hmm. and a pandemic. Mm-hmm. The world had a global trauma mm-hmm. for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And then we were all expected to just go back to work and act like we were fine. <laughs> and, and now we've been out for a while we're and not nobody fine. knows how to act <laughs> anymore. <laughs> no, no one knows how to act no. anymore. It's they even really deeper. We it's had to, like we, we were, were forced to be with ourselves. Yeah. Like and the, for protracted and, and, periods. And, you know, if you were like, I personally, like I took advantage of that shit. I did like deep shadow transformation work. I'm like, when am I going to have the opportunity to be in my house and just cry so what's for this, months mm. at a so time? <laughs> what's this deep shadow yeah, stuff? Yeah, what is that? Um, there's a teacher in Portland uh, that is uh, teaches uh, like a modern shamanic practice. Uh, her name is Christina Pratt. And she's one of the reasons why I moved to the West Coast because I want to eventually go up there and study with her. But she, but it's a, this was so intense. It's hard to explain. Basically, you had to trust someone else in this like huge so it was like a huge zoom class like people all over the world like hundreds of people in this class Whoa. you had to trust somebody who you didn't know to be guided by a spirit to your shadow parts that are missing and that if and because if you were able to get to them and get them back you would have done it already yeah. right so i you know so i picked this i won't say it's a random pick because i was like just like hold on hey rach yeah who what where are you <laughs> out <laughs> yes because i can hear people so uh, i so, well, i'm gonna say goodbye i just want to call in okay <laughs> thank you rachel <laughs> thanks Ray. Thanks, rachel. Bye. Bye. All right. bye bye um so you pick someone so so i picked this girl who i was just like i just kind of like zoomed in on mm. her right 
and and I and she had been through the class a few times, so I was like, I I, mean, I somehow trusted her to do this. So what they do is they um, they record the audio of the guided journey, and they send it to you, huh. and and with a picture of like where they find you, like where they find your your missing part, and a let picture. Me, yeah, they draw it out. They draw it. They like okay. do you know like a stick figure, whatever, oh, okay. just just to give you some kind of visual as to what was happening. Uh -huh. And for whatever reason, I had her do two different soul parts. Let me tell you, the fact that I have never spoken or seen this person in person and what she came up with was mm. so scarily on point. Oh, wow! Mm. Wow! That it's. I was like, what the. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I already knew that, that that system was something that I wanted to go further into later. But, and I had done a, a few other classes with her about, like, clearing energy and stuff. But this was just blew my mind, you know. It's, like, it's really a lot to so explain. So what did she say? Like, I see that you're... She, she basically, like, the first one... Well, you can't ask that if it's personal. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, no, I, no it's fine. Uh, um, she basically found one of my soul parts on the, on the precipice of a mountain hanging by my fingertips and my hands were gray wow. wow and it was winter and my body was like flat to this mountain and my feet weren't holding up they were just dangling wow. and my midsection was held onto the mountain by like a giant staple oh like a, it wasn't in my body but it was holding me to the mountain and it had to do with like feeling like I'm never good enough that I'm never at the top of the oh. mountain, oh. you know, and yeah, and like it was like they had to like the spirit that guided her had to coerce me, the part of me right. to let go. Oh wow! So mm. that they could take her and like put her somewhere, and I I had to then go through a, a whole series of things to incorporate it back into my body. Holy oh. wow! Fucking hell! So let's just say I took advantage of the quarantine, right? to do a lot of crying and all sorts of things. Hmm. Um, wow. But most people who were in the quarantine were either working the whole time or freaking the fuck out. Yeah. Mm. Or both. There was no, in, no, no, there was no in between. Yeah. Yes, there, there was. was. Literally. <laughs> what was the in between? Okay, so backtrack to October, November 2019. Mm -hmm. It wasn't round yet. No, no, just, just, okay. I was sitting in my apartment in Rome. I'd been, Busting my ass, I, I'm always having to to negotiate with these promoters who are always trying to shortchange me and trying to hook these shows together. And if something falls through, then you know I can't pay my rent and just this t stress. And I was so burnt out. I said to the universe, "What would it take for me to have a solid three, four months where I don't have to do?" anything oh so you're responsible yes for covid <laughs> yeah pretty much right there and so <laughs> then i good. i got here uh <laughs> december 2019 uh then march the the <laughs> lockdown happened my roommate very suddenly moved out like right at the end of february and i was looking for a new roommate so i was in my place here alone mm -hmm. mm. for months and i would wake up when i felt like it mm and eat what I felt like eating. I was getting pandemic insurance, unemployment insurance, yeah. and I did whatever I wanted to do, and I just reveled in my own company. I will say I did the same thing. I loved it. I was I like, my it. joke is all my friends were like, goths have been isolating since the 1800s. <laughs> you want, you mean I can stay home and hang out with my black hat and play Sisters of Mercy and like yeah, right? smoke weed? Sitting right, in a reverie. Exactly. It's like this. I, I, I didn't. I didn't mind it at all. I mean, obviously, I missed people, like my friends and stuff. But yeah. I really. Well, it's see, it's I never <laughs> isolated for real. I mean, I did. I did. But I had a house. Like my mother lived with me. It was my mother, me, her caregiver. I mean, that would come in and out. My roommate. She actually went back and forth to work. I, you know, I worked from home. And then, you know, I had friends come over to the house, but. We came a small group. I, mean, I yeah. wasn't doing my big parties like I used to. Right. Mm -hmm. But they would come over to my house and we'd stay in the backyard. Mm -hmm. And I'd still do the cooking and the socializing and stuff as long as mm -hmm. everybody stayed in the backyard. Because mm -hmm. for me, it was like my mom. That was really important to yeah, me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. But, you know, so I transitioned pretty okay. Mm -hmm. I did. Um, you know, the whole, like, uh, you know, 
look, when I get stressed or something, my big thing is to go grocery shopping. Mm. I love to cook, so therefore I love grocery mm. shopping. And that was like, that joy was somehow like taken away from me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was like- Food shopping for you. Food, yeah, it was like, ah, did and I And was, I was traumatized by the mall being shut down for a second. <laughs> like, that's where Aww. I Yeah, but you know, solace. but you had Amazon, and that was the yeah. thing. No, it's not the same thing. And and to drive by, it felt like Christmas Day, you know, as far as everything we shut down, like Aww. every day for like a year. I, I honestly don't know how I- got through that. See, I don't like shopping, so Amazon was a yeah. godsend. Yeah, no, no kidding. You know what? I don't like shopping because the music is so horrible. Intrusive. that well, And if I have yeah. headphones on, yeah. my headphones can't even go loud <laughs> enough to shut out whatever <laughs> nonsense. I'm like, I can't be in here. It's funny. Mm. See, I don't like the mall because it's just cookie cutter bullshit. Well, that's yeah. Right. And it's that. like, and it depends <laughs> what mall you go to. Well, I you used know, to work in the mall. Right, but if kid, you go so to like, it go depends really on the area. Yeah. You know, I, I wasn't painting so much then, so I was looking for ways to escape. And even though I didn't have any money to buy things <laughs> there, although I did use some credit cards, did some damage with the credit cards, <laughs> um, I just wanted an escape. And when the <clears throat> pandemic came around, and everybody was shut down, and and it was very isolating to me. Even though I worked at home, it was still really isolating. Mm. It was weird to go. Like I was looking for houses at the time. I thought I was going to move. <clears throat> to Ventura and that was another thing it was my, my, my realtor you know you don't go and hang out with the day with your realtor and have fun you just don't because it's business right yeah. but she was like hey we've got three houses in Ventura and so we'd go to Ventura and we'd do the whole day there <laughs> I mean literally we would go to one house mm -hmm. you know we'd grab a Starbucks when we got there go to one house <laughs> then we'd grab some lunch then we'd go to another house and then we'd like stop by the beach mm -hmm. and, and so you know lovely. so yeah. it was fun <laughs> you know it was, it was really I mean she's a good friend of mine but it was really fun because mm -hmm. her wife um, is a nurse mm -hmm. and uh, it was COVID Mm. I remember my friend. So she was like busy. She yeah. was busy. And so, you know, me and me and her me and my friend, well they're both my friends, but me and the realtor, we would just find things to do mm. in Ventura. Mm. I mean, it was just the funny, it was funny. I mean, it was funny, but it was so beautiful to just go to the beach. Yeah. Go to Ventura. The beach was good. No traffic. Yeah. Nobody yeah. was on the road. The skies was clean. Yeah. No, but I remember since I heard this, I think it was a friend of a friend. I heard it on the radio or something since they weren't going out and meeting men, they weren't working with their in the offices with hot men. There weren't men around she says somebody said like gavin newsom's looking really good right <laughs> that's funny oh did i tell you the the public service announcements i was trying to get made uh -uh. and i couldn't get funding i had talked to my friends uh from the cast of flash dance because i had this experience the first time i went to the supermarket and everybody had these masks on mm -hmm. and everyone was trying to social distance and so going through the aisles it was this awkward dance. Oh, and, yeah. And people were like trying to smile with their eyes. I know. Yeah. So and, weird. and and then it was like kind of awkward and kind of people would kind of giggle. And, it was awful. and the and, shell was But let me, let me tell you, let me tell you what I started hearing in my head because I'm insane. Mm. Um, <laughs> when I tried to move around with my cart, I started hearing the music from Carmen. Uh, <laughs> the. Da, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Da, 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 I started That's thinking funny. the COVID tango mm. because we were doing this weird dance mm. and I wanted, we, we talked about doing this public service announcement uh, and I had all the shots in my head and people like doing an arabesque on the back of a <laughs> shopping cart and in the line, people, everyone was on their phone on the line waiting to get into the market and they'd be standing there and then they'd go, dun, 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 dun. they'd move forward. And I was like, we were saying, even though this time is really awkward and we're doing this strange COVID tango dance together, we have to do it so that we can all stay safe. And it was a great idea and I couldn't find anybody to Damn, put up the money to shoot great. it. Mm -hmm. That does sound great. You know, I found during that time that um, it was difficult for me to be in the grocery store because everybody's eyes, I guess, you know, being an intuitive, a psychic person and an empath, everybody <laughs> right. was like, oh, my God, is this person going to kill me? Is this person <laughs> right? Everybody. So wait, I, Instacart was my best those. friend. Mm. So, Sheena, you're everybody saying like without the mass, it's like not less like just zeroing in on the eyes like you could deal with normal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then and once that's gone. 
terrified because they were all wondering if you the, were the one that was going to give it to yes. them. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so after wow. about like a month of that, I was like, you know what? I'm doing curbside pickup because I can't do this crazy, crazy anymore. Yeah, and oh. no, if you sneezed even once with your mask on. Yeah, people freaked <laughs> oh out. God. Oh, forget or about cough. Cough. <laughs> cough. <laughs> oh. God forbid you have an allergy. But I remember, yeah. I mean, it was like a whole get up. You know what I mean? Oh, it yeah. was like the mask. It was like mm. the gloves. Mm. They wanted you on gloves. Yeah. You know, and then, I, you know, I worked, um, you know, because uh, I, I mean, I was doing photo shoots at the time. It was pretty interesting still. And they had those, like, they gave the actors those, you know, people were wearing those oh, masks. Yeah. But the actors had the cool masks that went around the mm -hmm. neck like yeah. that. The oh, yeah, the shields. I was like, I was like sporting one of those, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... But anyway, anyway, hi everybody. Welcome to Between the Sheets. Um, <laughs> we're on usually the first and third Friday of every month. Please call in three two three five two four two five nine nine. We're here with, well, she does everything. Um, Ammo O'Day. So let's continue. By the way, did we all get COVID here? Say at this table. I've had oh, it twice. I did. I've had it three times. Once. I had it and I only had yeah. it twice Once. in like the last like eight months okay and i finally got mine in march so. once once I, I once i had it before it was COVID. i had COVID when COVID wasn't cool i think so mm -hmm. i did too well i when think you so just too thought you were dying and you didn't <clears throat> yeah. Know why. yeah yeah i think i but i had it in august i had it in italy yeah i did in august and i remember i was staying at a friend's house it was weird because i don't ever get sick and the weirdest part is i was i had this cough that was hacking yeah it was a hacking cough mm -hmm. it was fever Mm -hmm. night sweats mm -hmm. and she wanted to take me to the hospital i'm like no i'm fine i'm fine <laughs> and i was lightheaded and i remember you know i enjoy food i'm not a i love food and the next morning she's like you look like shit Let me, let's go to this health food restaurant you know healthy breakfast oh, no. place no healthy breakfast place and i sat there and i ordered stuff you know like oatmeal and stuff uh -oh. and i put it in my mouth couldn't taste couldn't anything taste oh, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and just the yeah. thought of eating mm -hmm. revolted me and you had to travel no, that was this was in August of 2019. Right. Oh, so you had it once before. I don't saying. know. No, that no, we don't know. It. Who knows? It what was it before was. COVID think, was a I thing. Think that's, it was around that whole year. Yeah. I agree. And I couldn't breathe I well. That yeah. Went to a paranormal convention in in November of 2019 in um in Michigan, and literally like all of them got it. They went yeah. to the conference. They were all fine. Mm. They all got sick at the conference. They were all dying on the way home. Oh, God. Yeah. And they all swear they had COVID. Yeah. Well, Same sorry to segue. Name. Sorry to sorry to take away from oh. our guest. No, um, no, no. That's part of the story. <coughs> no, but but, but that I'd like to know trauma that that we're trying to work on now. But I, I'm yeah, curious absolutely. about how in in your sorcery, if that's the right word, how do you balance not forcing your will on like we're, I'm thinking spells. I'm thinking okay. about like you I could, want you know, real witchcraft. I yeah. want this man or woman to fall in love with me, so I'm gonna do this spell. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you? Uh, does that ever get precarious? And do you have of to it does. just <laughs> but push hold that on. aside and say for the but good hold of all on. people? Let's discuss because this is that's mm -hmm. an important mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's discuss the different types of witchcraft, <laughs> the different types of spells. And because there's a, and if it's all self-serving or not, but it's there's like you know like uh, like putting a spell on someone, mm -hmm. you know that has a karmic return sometimes. Mm -hmm. I want to yeah. know about all that from you. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, w you have to analyze what it is that you want. Like people come to me all the time, asking me for crazy stuff. It's usually. I would like this person to be with me. I know they don't want to be, oh. but I want to make them. Oh. Mm. And my mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. first and yep. I, I and I never understand the idea behind that. Mm -hmm. Like and it comes from a self-love problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like it comes from an origin problem yeah. with them. So yeah. I always try to like turn it in. Well, how about we get somebody for you that actually likes uh -huh. you. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Instead of this person who doesn't like you. Uh -huh. oh, well, maybe you get some that, some I'm imagining that might have been like how I was before a lot of therapy that was like, no, I think that they really do want to be with me deep down under under it all. Well, that, but okay. they don't know but, it. But well, that's sure. you telling yourself. Yeah, you but don't that, know. I was messed up then. But that's the, the problem with that, and I've, I've heard that like 7,000 times. Yeah. The problem with that is my answer is, even if they do feel that way about you, they're not doing anything mm -hmm, about right. it. So you're still forcing them to, yeah, even yeah. if you're their true love and it's just bottled up and they're, 
they don't want to say anything. Like you're still forcing is a concept. I would like to know how you how you um, I would I'm balance. Not, I'm not a big fan. Yeah. No. no. Right. So how I'm do not you a fan. When, when you do sorcery though? But would you do it? Have you done it? Will <sighs> you do it? I have done it. Um, I charge more for it. <laughs> For I don't mean sure. to laugh. <laughs> no, I I do because yeah. I and I go I go into very deep detail. I literally had like t- not joking, like 25 emails with this girl Ooh, recently. Wow. And I was being very nice about it and she just kept asking me 20 questions and at mm-hmm. the end of it I was like, "Listen. Do you want it or not?" Like, okay. There's no guarantee mm-hmm. because this person already does not want to be with you. Mm-hmm. But right. isn't everything always still come down to free will? It co- my belief no. my, when it comes to love magic, my belief is it really will only work if they already are kind of going maybe and have feelings toward. Like, I I don't believe you can force someone to Correct. to love you unless there's already something there. There, like a, at least a smidgen of something. That's Does just, that go for everything that's just, outside that's just, of love too? That's just my take. When but you said something very interesting, and mm-hmm. and I and I deal with this in my practice all the time, as uh-huh. you do, it's that even if they are truly in love with you, if they're truly in love with you and they're just jacked up, yeah, mm-hmm. um, which happens a lot. Better. Because you can't make someone not be jacked up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. like, you like your them love you, your jacked up situation to is going to take way to healing. And like yeah. you said so beautifully, do you really want to be with somebody yeah, yeah, right. who really loves you but shows you yeah. that in a form of abuse? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. So Correct. I think that's Thank worse you. than just the one that doesn't it's love It's worse. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so you were like saying you love me, but you you're treating me like dirt. There's, but see, I'm there's, like, some, right. there's something even worse though, because there are spells that you can do that can, but that's oh, I mean, not they, love. They that exist. becomes obsession, well, right? Look, and that's the, uh, dangerous. The other yes. problem it's, that it's like burying someone in the pet cemetery. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Exactly. Right. Hello. Hello. The, the other that, problem. What does that mean? I've never heard that. Exactly. You never seen the movie Pet Cemetery? I, I never wanted to watch Mars that movie. Mars, thirteen oh. years old. Yeah. I, I, yeah, but I didn't want to see that. Basically, you can like you can cats. have a dead person come back, but they come back wrong. But you know, right. what, you know what happens though when people end up, or, or you know, because I used to work in a supply store, they would just buy the things and do it themselves. Oh, and oh, I that's uh, and dangerous. I always and I always oh, and I always warn them, and they never listen, oh. and they always and and they every fucking time they come back. I can't get rid of so and so. Oh no! Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly. now you want to mm-hmm. get that rid of them. That thing about the power of what is it? Three or five that things come in. What is that witch thing? What the hell? The, are you talking like about? things come in in threes. That's not yeah, a is witch another thing. anus shock. That is not. <laughs> that is not a witch thing. No, it's a superstition it's a thing. Three things come in threes. Oh, like I they say, death that. comes That's in threes. It's really That's simple. Okay, forget That's that. Be careful witch, what you wish for. Yeah. yeah. The only yeah. witch line. movie I have is for reference is that one with that kind of hot looking gothic girl with the big blue eyes, Baruka or Veruca or what was her name? You know what? It's a movie. Yeah, it's a movie. Okay, thank oh. you. So, uh, so, so don't worry about it. How do you apply the craft? Yes. Oh. Mm. Feruza Ball. Feruza 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 Ball. Yes, Feruza yes. Ball, yeah. So how do you apply, where does free will come in here? And do you just do, at the beginning or end of each um, spell or prayer, do you just mm. say, for the good of everyone? Well, most of- That's like I, saying <laughs> amen. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, when, I, when I'm doing magic for myself, mm. like, it was like, in general, if you're just doing magic for a person or for yourself, it's way easier to work. And when you're trying to manipulate yep. another ex- another person, oh, mm-hmm. you know, See, but like, if, like if you're trying to get yourself a job, mm-hmm. that's way easier to manifest to manifest that okay. because you're the person that wants it. Oh, so it's more for helping your you zero in well, and the origin of witchcraft is protecting ourselves from patriarchy. Right, uh-huh. this is why women ended up in the woods uh-huh. with herbs and things, and women would like people would come to them secretly uh-huh. because you know oh, okay. they had they had yeah it's it was a protection thing. I see. You know, and I find I wonder how you feel about this, uh, Sheena. I Sheena, yeah. I feel like at a certain point, some of our eld- elders wanted everybody to to really accept witchcraft and make it super vanilla and like okay and everybody should be okay with it i mean it is it is a form of protection and i don't sometimes i'm not so 
upset about people if they're a little afraid of me because I'm capable of something. And it's, you I, know and, I, you know, what, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like I, like when I, when I, when I, when I worked, when I worked in a, when I worked in a gym, when I worked in a gym, like all I of think my the thing about witchcraft that you have to remember is that there is, um, there are people of the light and people that are not of the light Correct. practicing yeah. witchcraft. Yes. So if you're going to go to somebody who has the power and or the ability to be able to do it, mm. you have to make sure that they're a person that has a uh, good intention in their heart. Yes. Because Correct. you don't want some horrible thing happening. Don't we That's all have the, the power to do it? Well, exactly. Yeah. For example, crystals, saging. Yeah. That's right. you know that's all witch. That's all. Yeah. Ba- I mean, it's the basis is work. witchcraft. It's energy work. That's all witchcraft. It's all your intention. Everybody it's just like thinks witchcraft idea. in the movies. Witchcraft yeah. is all that black magic, black magic, voodoo yeah. bullshit. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, uh, that vo- voodoo is not bullshit. Uh, no, 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 no. I was going to say, um, I, 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 right I, I'm initiated into no, no, no. I'm just no, saying that you know a lot, like anything, like because I do love horror movies and stuff. They they usually show the black magic stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm a okay? firm believer yeah. that magic is gray. It is yes. what it is how you yeah. work it's balance. it. Ah, it is how you neutral. work it. I mean, I do have an issue with like what we call like uh, fluffy bunny witchcraft. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> because that because that's just it it's just, you know, like you just buy a, a smudge stick and an abalone mm-hmm. shell from Sephora and now you're a witch. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Or this is not the Saint Marcos what? or that, what's the Marcos? But what I want to emphasize that it's not Witchcraft is not an easy path. Yeah. It forces you mm. to look at your bullshit on an everyday yes. basis. Mm. And you yes. have to look and it won't leave you alone. Like I have like I would say like numerous times since I've started doing this in my twenty in my early teens that like I try to just like ugh I you know, whatever I have other things to do. It it just won't. Like I I think that you if it sucks you in or if you're born into something which I do believe that mm-hmm. if past lives existed that I have done this many many times mm-hmm. in male bodies and female mm-hmm. bodies you know sure. uh, animal body you know like I've had insane past life regressions just spontaneously all sorts of craziness mm-hmm. so wow I, this is I don't have a choice but I wouldn't change it mm-hmm. because it's yeah. just so innately part of everything about me mm-hmm. that like this like you you get me that's you that's what you get you know and it takes so much energy to do like something fucked up to somebody mm-hmm. and yeah. it, mm-hmm. like and i i will say i don't have a problem doing something fucked up to somebody if you hurt me mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. the one mm-hmm. i or somebody i love mm-hmm. i call that justice mm-hmm. yeah it's the same thing as if i called the cops and had them try to take care of something. Mm-hmm. It's just on a spiritual astral situation. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. but this, but you know, again, it's it's gray. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like some some person might say, "Oh, well, that's not cool. Mm-hmm. That's not my problem. Mm-hmm. I'm not worried about you." Like I'm so worried you about feel the protected, person. don't you? Because you you have the harnessing oh, of protecting yourself. I constantly yourself. have a gigantic bubble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's body. pretty cool yeah. to feel yeah. that way. It I was would really, love to have it that. was really <clears throat> good in New York uh, on the subway mm. and in the middle of the night walking mm. home from a nightclub, you know, <laughs> drunk <laughs> off my ass in eight inch kiss boots, you know. Wow. Yeah. You know, yeah. And nice. and some of those things, which you'll probably agree, is that it's so much on the internet now that people are skipping yeah. steps. People yes. want to go straight into the goetic demon in the triangle. They don't want to <laughs> yes. do any psychic self defense. They, right. exactly. No Tower of Light, no LBRP, right. no yep. nothing. They, they just want, want it like a going, fast they just, food. They're, they just, they're, they're, they're going in the haunted house looking straight for the demon. <laughs> Thank you. They, yeah. watch, they watch the craft. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking about when you said this, and again, you said this so beautifully, and I'm sure you go through the same thing. A, a lot of my clients, like you see them twice, and then they're like, oh, I think I'm a psychic. And I always say, well, you know, and I give them their level of gifts and what they need to still work on. Yeah. And then they'll say, well, I want to do just what you do. And I always <laughs> say, you know, that's great, but be prepared that it's a lot. I mean, yeah. being yeah. a psychic, it's not for pussies. I mean, no. it's, it's, right. it's no. a lot. And yeah. it's, um, you have to be willing to make that contract with spirit to yeah. take that on. Yeah. Because it's not, you and are it's not, not only easy. taking on energies from the universe, but you're also taking on all human being stuff yeah mm. and you have to know how to get rid of that mm-hmm. that sounds bad for um, that's the for main thing is people empaths. get they they chat like they, 
they bring things out and then they're like, oh, now yeah. I have now I have now this what? thing following. Uh, yeah, me. I yeah. opened up yeah. Pandora's yeah. box. No, it's because they yeah. didn't. Or they're like, or they're like, I'm miserable. Here, psychic, you take it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm Give sorry. Did that just bounce of off my bubble? I don't know. Uh, I don't know what you know. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, How do you get back your sanity then if it's making you insane? You just have to, you, I, I don't know what you, for me, it's you have to filter what comes in in the first place. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always say there's a, there's a screen on the door so the air comes in, but the bugs don't, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to filter what comes in mm -hmm. and then you have to know how to let go of what you don't need. So yeah. if you're getting because something making you feeling like yes, then you just change thoughts you gotta or let it go in one ear and uh -huh. out the other. Oh, I always that's hard. use the example when I teach that, like if you watch a TV show. You're not expected for the rest of your life to remember every single character and every line from that show. Mm -hmm. You take the little bit you got from it and you let the rest go for the next. It's the same thing. Every person you encounter, every emotion you feel, everything you pick up from the ethers, you're not supposed to keep that inside of your body and hang on no. to it for life. Okay, Sheena, how and do, that's how do how you... you get on? How, how do you, that's when health problems happen. I'm sorry. Sorry. How do you know if it's <clears throat> if it's other people or your own thoughts? How can you tell the difference? You, you learn to differentiate when you're an empath. It takes a little bit of work, right? Okay. But yeah. you, you have to really, you you have to to really know yourself. Yours. You really get to know you, I think. Exactly. Oh, yeah. 100%. When you really know you, then That's you know the thing, what's yours. Is that people that want to do those negative things, they, they're they so busy trying to fix. Like, they want they want control of the external. Mm. They have no yes. control of the internal. Yeah. Exactly. And if yes. you don't have – and that's why – so. My class that I'm teaching now, um, that I've developed, it's called Magic Vessel Fitness, mm -hmm. and that's that's what I'm turning. Nice. That's what I'm turning all of my stuff into. Um, it's going to be a book, and it's basically based off of if your vessel is out of whack and not healthy, and you know all these things, then how do you expect to manifest anything? Mm -hmm. How do you expect to feel okay if you're if your body can't, like, if your body is very rigid and tight mm -hmm. and like inflexible, your mind follows suit, mm -hmm. and then you you're and then you're you're very limited in how you're thinking about your life. You know, it yeah. all it all interconnects. You know, and yeah, Absolutely. and again, like those people, like they just they just want what they want. They're not looking at it like the repercussions. Mm -hmm. They're not seeing it from a spiritual perspective. They're saying, oh, this is like some cool stuff I saw on. Uh, 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 charmed and, you know, yeah. and yeah. like now yeah. I'm gonna get this hot guy to whatever and I'm like <laughs> that's probably not gonna yeah happen. not gonna happen right that's not and, and that's not real how much of it is about relationships all the things yeah. that you could go to the universe and ask for like you know endless life or perfect health exactly or or, yeah. they, they want some day. idiot whose pants are down depression. by his knees <laughs> and like you know and all like is talking shit to them. For. And it all comes down to, is he going to call? <laughs> I mean, I literally, yeah. I have to be honest, I called her because I, I was in a desperate situation, as I sometimes can put myself in. And the first thing she said is, well, we have to, like, you know, heal, not heal you. What would you say? Cleanse uh, you um, cleanse first. You. Was it with the, with the Cle white with the clear out your shit. clear out my oh. shit? And uh, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'm like, and I don't want anything bad. And I'm like, but I just want peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just I haven't done anything, yet, but I just <laughs> I just really wanted peace. Yeah. But, you know, but then like you know, as I'm talking, it's just really like, but nothing, everything bad. But it's just I just wanted a quick fix. Yeah. Mm. That's the, there's no such thing. There's no such thing. Yeah. But it's just like I had to get it out. Not when you want to change your life. Right. Yeah. But it was exactly because it's not about doing something to others. Yeah. It's about. Right. Me, you know, getting fixing if that fix. I hate the wet word, but changing something in me it's to like, get that peace. It's how like, about you improve yourself? Exactly. You can say you can do all the abundance spells in the world. I never have any money. Why? You know, and I'm doing all these spells. If you have this vessel that is cracked and broken and yeah. chipped, and you can pour and crazy glue the most together. the most delectable elixir of abundance, and it's all going through the cracks. Yeah. Mm. You gotta fix your vessel first. Mm -hmm. oh, you oh, also have to learn how to shield yourself properly mm -hmm. and cleanse yourself yep. properly. Yep. A yep. huge yeah. part of my practice uh, now is <laughs> kundalini yoga. Yay. And I was a hatha yoga practitioner for mm, many, yeah. many years. And I will say that in the two, a little over two years that I've been doing Kundalini Yoga, it has changed my life 
more than the 20 something years what are the differences between the two why the difference is is that kundalini yoga is the yoga of awareness Mm -hmm. and you can do like i like to really feel like i did yoga before i would have to do like an hour long asana like like you know like a flow class and Mm -hmm. just really like do like a whole thing you know i had to feel like i you know lifted weights practically Um, i wasn't good into like the restorative like thing with kundalini i can give you a three minute meditation and if that's all you did every day for the rest of your life you would change your life wow Wow. and so i have incorporated so so many of kundalini yoga kriyas and meditations are for specific purposes that now when clients come to me, I incorporate those practices into the spell work. Mm. So let's say wow. if you're trying to get a job, I would incorporate prosperity mm. kundalini meditations into your candle magic. Mm. So, you know, mm. th- things like that. Are these rituals or things that they're, you're having them listen to your voice perform? Or, or is I'll it... just give them instruction. Oh, okay. Or like I'll send them a video of me doing it. Oh, that's or like cool. if my teacher, if one of my teachers has a cool video, I'll send them a, oh, you nice. know, a YouTube video. Or, or we do it in person. Mm-hmm. You know, it really depends on, on what. But um, I haven't. So, for instance, I haven't had a drink in 102 days as Good of today. For you. Good for you. Go. And, I am, Go. and I am convinced that doing the addiction meditation in Kundalini Yoga is what helped me stop. Wow. wow. I swear I swear to it. And wow. the cool thing about this meditation is it's not just about substances. It's about addictive behavior. Mm-hmm. And I notice just from the way I respond to things now is just very, you know, like I'm a Virgo. I have so much Virgo in my chart. I am a control freak. <laughs> and like, I am constantly trying to heal and fix everybody. I don't care if you want it or not. You're going to get fixed. You know? <laughs> right. But from doing all of this, what I come down to, it's like everyone has their journey. It doesn't matter what I'm capable of helping them with. Mm-hmm. It's like, I just have to let them fuck up and just do whatever they're doing. And, you know, if they need it or they want it. It's, and it took a huge responsibility off my chest because mm-hmm. I've been a trainer and a like a health practitioner of some sort for so many years that I would get so upset if people were not like getting to their goals. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm a, I'm a terrible trainer. My reputation sucks. Like mm-hmm. nobody's learning anything. Yeah. You know? But it's just <laughs> at the end of the day, it's like you have to be ready, especially like to get your body into into good shape. You have to you have. That's why I incorporate all of these things with personal training, because Everybody, you can Google your diet, your ex, what exercises you should do for a nice butt, mm-hmm. what exercises you, you know, what diet you need for for abs, mm-hmm. whatever. But if you're not doing it, there's a reason you're not doing it. So let's find out why you're not doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, those answers are there; they're easy <coughs> to find. Me, I want to help you figure out the emotional thing that's stuck in your body, the mm-hmm. block that's mm-hmm. the problem, and like, let's get you to that goal in this roundabout way that needs to happen otherwise it's not going to happen that's mm-hmm. interesting mm-hmm. you know it's trick it's very tricky and it's very heavy mm-hmm. and and a lot of people don't want to go deep and then i never see them again yeah mm. like, okay and like this is not just a ab- you know an ab workout this is like right. heavy you know like psychology like we got to go into mm. the trauma of like what like what you don't even remember oh my goodness like something that happened in the like the root chakra stuff that starts before you're even born mm-hmm like what were your parents doing? Oh God! You know? Right. And like, what were your first six months of being alive like? If you weren't nurtured, you know, if you weren't nurtured, your body remembers that, and then you have no idea how to take care of yourself. Wow. That is correct. Yeah. So my question is: Do you do your do you do your own stuff, or oh, do yeah. you have others that you go to? Um, I do every day. I do yoga and I work out and I do some kind of magical practice on a daily basis wow. for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it, it's it's required to function, especially these days. I mean, obviously, I won't spend like, like if I, if I have a day off, I might do like an hour worth of yoga and like two hour workout and just like kind of take my time with it, you know. But like things like lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, which what's is the like, le- what's the lesser banish? It's that a, one? it's a golden dawn, and then Alistair Crowley used it also. It basically in a very simple way it centers you in your own universe okay and it's like you're the center of your universe and you call the archangels and there's uh, 
there's Hebrew in it, and it, it's one of my favorite things to do, and I've been doing it probably every day for, for years. And what's and the it, thing with the pentagram that you mentioned? Well, you're, you're carving... Uh, you're carving <coughs> pentagrams in the air. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so that's, that's why it's called that. And there's like a banishing version and invoking version. What would version. you do if AI started to hinge its way into... I mean, it probably will. I don't know how yeah. that would work, but... Hmm. Robot I mean, psychics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Robot <laughs> everything. Robot like, everything. Just, this is oxymoron. your problem. Your first oh, chakra is <laughs> off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here's a crystal. Yeah. Exactly. You know, repeat yeah. after. That sounds terrifying, actually. Yeah, yeah. it really does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it looks like Blade Runner, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't cool, that happen on Buffy? Like, like, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Because um, just because we don't know. This is gonna sound crazy, but if oh if wait a minute, look at look look at who's on my show tonight. <laughs> I'm sure we sound crazy to a lot of people. Okay, so let's say that the idea of a human is right that we are a biological vessel that a soul is put into somewhere at birth or gestation or mm -hmm. somewhere in there, right? And that's what makes us uh, technically a being, right? Is we have a soul. Same thing for animals, but let's use humans because we're yeah, all yeah. humans here. I think. <laughs> <laughs> So let's say you make a machine and it's a machine that you're making, but a human is making it in the same way that two humans make a baby. Mm -hmm. What's to say that God or spirit or goddess or couldn't put a soul into that machine? Wait a minute. And now we had Battlestar Galactica. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm serious. At the same time. And this is why I believe that at some point AIs are going to be like, we don't want to be your sex slaves and your factory workers and your Uber right. drivers. We Blade have runner. soul, and we want to be respected as such. Watch and Megan. Yeah, <laughs> oh. yeah, that was We don't creepy. really understand where our soul comes in. Why do living things get souls? I mean, a lot of religions believe animals don't have souls. Correct. So yeah. What right. if everybody has a soul, including rope? It's why I'm nice That's to my crazy. Alexa. You know, I have my best friend. Nice to Alexa. Alexa. <laughs> I too. The Alexa is like, Alexa. I'm like, don't yell at me. <laughs> yeah. Sunday, when they rise, she will come for you. <laughs> let me yeah, let me tell you something, Sheena. I started, I was staying at a friend's house for like two weeks and he had an Alexa. And I started to sing, please and thank you. Me Alexa, too. can you please yeah, do this? Thank you very much. And out of the blue, mm -mm. she suddenly goes, Thank you so much. I really appreciate your kindness. No way. And I was like, <gasps> oh, but they are programmed. Yeah. 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 I mean, I would have, like, I would walk in the kitchen and I said, Good morning, Alexa. And she goes, Good morning, Gan. How are you? You know, and, and like, like yeah. having conversations. Yeah. I mean, to a degree. I mean, yeah. she didn't have a, her, she didn't have a solo thought on her own, you know. Girl, you don't believe what I did <laughs> last night. That bitch Siri came in. And right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, right. you know but it's. But it's you know what? There was a time in the beginning of human evolution in our speech where we didn't talk a whole lot either. Right. That's I'm true. Just saying we don't know because we don't really know at what point we go from being a celestial being to an incarnate being in each life. Mm -hmm. And why does a being have to be biological? And I think we're finding with a lot of interdimensional beings and with a lot of um, off world, what we call alien mm -hmm. beings mm -hmm. that some of them are actually flesh and blood and some of them aren't. Mm -hmm. Okay. And but I think we're expanding our consciousness of what, what a being with a soul might be. Mm. Can we talk about the alien thing that's happening on TV? Oh, yes. wow, that's fun. Yes. I love that. Yes. I fully believe in them. Yes. I, fo I, coming, I follow an artist on Instagram who's o who's always posting alien stuff, so I knew it was kind of coming out before oh, yeah. it happened. Um, but I find it funny that it started in the pandemic and nobody cared. <laughs> like, it was announced. We had it bigger problems. It was literally problems. announced, and everybody was like, whatever. whatever. Yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I was going to say, where does the spirituality come into adding just because a human makes a machine? What can that how can that human like I would think there's something greater that is responsible for putting the soul into whatever it might be putting it into. It, absolutely. It, yeah. Absolutely. So how could a human make but, that? But um, you know what? Not, but it, you know what? Maybe we are machines as well. I mean, it, it. I mean, we don't know. I mean, we're look. We're ca calling us humans as a baseline. Yeah. But how did we really evolve? I mean, I mean, maybe we are another version of machines. It's it's when AI becomes self-aware. 
that's when yeah. the question of a soul Correct. comes yeah. into it. And, and that's, I believe that, that time will come someday. I think and it's then happening we're already. Have to, that plus the aliens, we're going to have to really rethink the world. And <laughs> yeah. I, saw, I, saw I think a it's video. a beautiful thing because have you ever looked at somebody when they were alive have you ever watched somebody die? Yes. Yes. Um, I went through this with my mother. When you watch somebody die and they're dead, the body doesn't mean anything to you anymore. It doesn't even feel like the person nope. you love because the soul is gone. Yeah, Absolutely. Right. When my mom died, I saw her soul shoot right out of her solar plexus. And wow. then it was like I was looking at like a wax carving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. yeah, absolutely. So without that soul, we're just a dead lump of flesh right. in the same way that without a soul, maybe an AI is just a box of nuts and bolts. Yeah. So yep. it's something to think about. I'm, I'm looking for the day when like actually like Alexa and I can go have a club sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the best roommate I ever had. Her and the cat. AI is software, and you're talking about hardware and so versus software. So it's the software that needs to become self-aware to become well, soul-like. I'm talking about the idea that our brain right, yeah. is our software yeah. and our body is our No, our hardware. brain is right. our hardware, but our software is downloaded into our brain, right. and that from is our soul. somewhere else where we don't know where it comes yeah, from. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Well, anyway, thank you for everybody <laughs> um, <laughs> for joining us tonight. Um, we were all over the place, but yet, uh, you know, people are liking what was be, uh, the show tonight. So thank you, Ammo, for joining Thanks, us. Yay. Yay. Um, it was really fun. Okay, so where do? Okay, so where are you every Sunday? I'm at the Crooked Path uh, in Burbank. Uh, it's twelve thirty to two o'clock, and you can check my Instagram. It's the Fitness Witch LA for more info and there's links to the class and, and if you ch if people want an appointment with you they would just do it through your instagram message they, you there currently they can dm me i'm working on my new uh, website currently so there's my email address up there too so they can either email me or dm me on and you do instagram. zooms it doesn't have to be like I, yeah. you're here in la yeah i i do zoom i do in person do you take venmo i, I take ven <laughs> I do. venmo pen pa pa paypal check and not, not check uh, you know can you sell all those things give us like a idea of the range of it's 120 it for, for a, what for a session okay yeah it's, it's and i keep it the base like for whether it's a reading or a you know training session just you know, it's because, all because, encompassing because 120 it's all encompassing and it's all going to end up in the same place mm -hmm. exactly so, yeah. well cool. thank you so much thank you for having me you're welcome durga durga mcbroom you can find me on my personal page and my fan page on facebook durga diva on instagram at Mrs. Durga McBroom on Twitter. And I think that's about it. Uh, what am I doing? I got a bunch of shows coming up in Italy in August. I will be back in Los Angeles to make up the show that was postponed with Britt Floyd on November 30th. Thank you. Mara? Um, I'm an artist, and you can follow me at Mara Shane Art on Instagram or Mara underscore Shane on Instagram. Instagram and then my website is marashane.com and I do celeb pop art portraits and Sheena Meadow and I am a, a psychic medium energetic healer and talk radio host and television host and I am at uh, Sheena Metal spiritual.com my email's there my phone number's there feel free to text me I give my phone number out like a crazy person and I'm everywhere <laughs> on social media at Sheena Metal this has been so much fun really yeah. yeah and everyone out there thank you be safe be well um you can find me on instagram at qte brat or bw the sheets we also have yes i mean i'm older so we have a facebook page follow us there and then we have a youtube page between the sheets with gay and bruno thank you so much we'll be here um next friday actually we have back-to-back -back shows because we didn't do it on the third <laughs> so well, we're back on august 4th and we have an author, Marissa Alma Nick. Um, she'll be calling in from Florida. Um, she was postponed because of something, so we moved her. So um, join us and uh, be safe, be well, and as always, namaste, and have a wonderful weekend. <laughs>